in the purchasing department. And I called one morning and told the receptionist to tell my boss that I didn't feel well. I will be in, but I'll be late. She said, all right. And I went in and worked after I got feeling better. The next morning, I called again, and I said, Bridget, tell Christy that I will be in because we were going on a new computer system. And I had been selected to choose it to, to uh, uh, teach it to the other uh, ones in our department. And I knew it was important that I be there because we were just about ready to go live. And I said, tell her that um, I will be there, but I don't feel well, I'll be late. I wound up in Manatee Emergency Room, and I wound up in the hospital for two weeks. And the doctor came into me one um, afternoon, 20 years ago, and said to me, um, Ethel, and I said, yes. He said, you have colon cancer. And I said, oh, I was on Demerol for pain. I said, okay. You know. So in the morning, I'm going to take you for surgery and we'll remove part of the colon and do a colostomy. And in eight weeks, we'll re reattach it. And I said, okay, okay. So uh, that evening, our daughter and, um, of course, my husband came up and my sister died in 79 from colon cancer. So I told Paul, I said, I, I don't feel like I have cancer. Big old tears ran. I said, it's okay. It's all right. If I do, they've made progress in treatment. So it's okay. The next morning I went to surgery. And the surgeon came out, Dr. Esty, he's a jewel. And he told my husband and my daughter, I don't understand this. I do it every day. Everything says it's cancer except the lab. And all the tissue looks exactly like cancer. Everything looks like cancer, but the lab says no. Hallelujah. So the next day he sat on the side of my bed. He said, Ethel, I said, yes, Dr. Esty. I am seldom wrong. <laughs> I said, Dr. Esty. I don't mind that you are wrong, okay? <laughs> Not to worry about it. The experiences that I went through when I was there as far as the physical, the physical um, part of it. Yes, One morning, um, Paula came in, and she was there with me, and they took me to x-ray to do a test. And while I was there, I, uh, oh my Lord, it was absolutely Horrible. I was, of course, before surgery. And I told the little technician that was beside me, I said, tell them to stop. Just tell them to stop and let me die. I can't take any more. Just tell them to stop. And nothing here nor there. But I have a very high tolerance for pain. But I thought, I can't, I can't take it anymore. And so, uh, you know, she said to the doctor, you know, hey, you, you got to stop. Which, of course, they didn't. And when I got back to it, going back to my room when I passed the nurse's station, I said to my nurse, Char, could you please bring me an injection? And she said, of course. And Paula said, Mom, what happened to you? When I came in, you looked like you felt so much better. What happened? And I said, well, honey, I went to hell and back. <laughs> That's how I felt. But you know what? That is some of the benefits of serving Jesus. Yes, yes. He takes care of us. He has taken care of me all of my life. And I so greatly appreciate it. And I want to tell you what a wonderful, wonderful Savior He is. Why did I have to go through it? I really am not sure. I know that if you have pain, I can tell you I feel for you. But if I've had that same pain, brother, I can pray for you. I know how it is, and I can really pray for you. And then, two, we would never know miracles. The song said I'd never uh, uh, had, if I hadn't had a problem, I wouldn't know he could solve them. And it's just a miracle that the Lord does for us. And so as this time rolls around, and as I said, it's been 20 years, I am so grateful for it, and I wanted to share that with you. Well, this is going to be kind of short, but as most of you know, 
that a few weeks ago I had a biopsy on some places, mainly on my leg. And so I went up and Brother Marlow and numerous other elders came around and they prayed for me. And one of the last things Brother Marlow said to me is that everything's going to be all right and there's nothing wrong with this biopsy. It's going to come back negative. Well, the day I was to find out about it was the same day that we had the services for Mary Gay. And so I was on my way over to that service and my son called me and told me the dermatologist had called and that I needed to call him. So, but he said, there's nothing, you know, nothing wrong. They just need to see you or talk to you. So on my way home, I decided that instead of calling him, I would just stop by the office. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I'm not really sorry, but at the time I really felt bad that I did it because they said, oh, we're so glad you stopped because the doctor really needs to see you. So the doc, they put me in a room and the doctor came in and he said, I hate to tell you this, but we have to do another biopsy because the first one was inconclusive. Amen. Now that inconclusive was that God had already took care of the problem. But they insisted they needed to do another one and they went clear to the bottom of that place on my leg. And I'm here to tell you I screamed bloody murder because I'm, I'm allergic to pain. <laughs> Especially in flicker pain, and they put all these shots all the way around that thing, and it hurt. I think I cleared out the entire office. <laughs> anyway, then the next day after I had this done again, I came, you know, when it was time to come to church, I come to church and I couldn't even talk. Couldn't even whisper, could I, Brother Marlowe? No, you couldn't. Well, now you see I'm talking again, finally. <laughs> But anyway, Thursday, I had to wait another week, and Thursday, I got the final results, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with my leg. There's no cancer in there. There's no, what is that, that MRSA stuff. There's no E. coli. There is no nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. And God is the only reason I'm fine in the prayers that went up Hey! 